start. Assalamualaikum. My name is Dr. Junaid Jahangir Awasi, and I am senior registrar in pediatrics at Rawalpindi Medical University. Today, I am going to tell you how to do examination of precordium in children. Assalamualaikum. My name is Dr. Junaid. I will help you. Inshallah, the next time I will not be able to help you. Can I help you? Thank you. Uh, in examination of precordium, first of all, do the inspection. Inspect the precordium, look for any visible scar marks, deformity, pectus excavatum, carinatum, any uh, bulge in the uh, thorax, any visible pulsations, anything abnormal which you can see. Then before doing palpation, if it's a cold weather, must rub your hands so that your hands may not be so cold. When you do palpation, the palpation starts from apex beat. First of all, the apex beat, feel the apex beat after feeling it, locate the apex beat with your finger, then count it from manubrium sterni, which is in the second intercostal space, count it from the second intercostal space, third, fourth, and fifth. Let's suppose it is in the fifth intercostal space, then Point it out, it is it in the fifth intercostal space? See where it is. Either it, is it in the mid-clavicular line or is it displaced? Then see whether it is normal or it is tapping or is it heaving. When the apex speed is tapping, your finger will be finger will be slightly tapped. Heaving means that it is lifting up. It's, just, it's not only just touching, it's lifting up. Then there is ill-sustained heave and well-sustained heave. In ill-sustained heave, the finger is lifted up for a short time. In well-sustained heave, the finger is lifted up for a long time. So after checking the apex bead, look, uh, feel the right ventricular heave with either this method or sometimes it's done with this method. Then palpate the pulmonary area and the aortic area with the fingers and palm of your hand. This is to see whether there is, is there any thrill present in the pulmonary and the aortic area. Then look for the trachea, palpate the trachea. After palpating trachea, look for epigastric pulsations. Feel the epigastric pulsations. So these were the five steps in palpation of the precordium. I repeat again. First of all, apex speed, then the right ventricular heave, then palpate the both aortic and the pulmonary areas, then the trachea, and then the epigastric pulsations. So after palpation, go for auscultation. Now auscultation of the precordium starts from apex speed. In fact, it starts from mitral area and mitral area is the area where the apex beat is felt. So if the examiner just asks you to auscultate the precordium, he gives you a short command, auscultate the precordium. Then don't go to the auscultation straight away. First of all, do all the steps, introduction, consent, proper exposure, then come and check the apex beat, locate the apex beat and then <coughs> that will be the mitral area. So you have to auscultate that area. So mitral area is the area where the apex beat is felt. So this is the mitral area. First step is to place the step at the right point. Second step is to synchronize it with the carotid. Third step is to give the command of respiration to the patient. Saas under le, bahar nikale, or rock le. Fourth step is to ask the patient to go to the left lateral position, better left lateral position or side position, and see whether there is exaggeration of any murmur. And fifth step, see the ojemter. Fifth step is to check the radiation of the murmur in the exam. So I repeat these five steps at the mitral area. First step is to place the step at the exact area. Second step is to synchronize. Third step is to give the command of respiration. 
Fourth step is to do left little and the final step is to check the radiation in the axilla. Now the next area is tricuspid area. In tricuspid area again the first step is to place the step at the exact area. Second step is to synchronize it in the carotid. Third step is to give the command of respiration. Beta sans lamba le, andar le, or rope. These are three steps at the tricuspid area. Next is the pulmonary and then the aortic area. At the pulmonary area, again, there are three steps. First step is to place the step. Second step is to synchronize with the carotid. And third step is to give the command of respiration. Beta sans andar le, or rope. The final is the aortic area. In aortic area, the first step is to place the step at the exact point. Second step is to synchronize with the carotid or carotid pulsation. Third step is to give the command of respiration. Beta sans le, bahar nikale, or rogue. Fourth step is to ask the patient to sit up and lean forward. Bad chain beta, thora sa juk chain. Thora juk chain. And fifth step is to check the radiation in the neck. So these are the five steps in auscultation of the aortic area. I have asked this patient to sit up and lean forward because the murmur of <clears throat> aortic regurgitation uh, becomes exaggerated when the patient leans forward. And I have checked the uh, radiation into the neck because the murmur of aortic stenosis radiates to the neck. I have, initially I have asked this patient to come on the left lateral position because the murmur of martial stenosis it gets exaggerated when the patient uh, uh, is turned towards the left lateral position. I have given him commands of respirations because the murmurs of right heart they increase during inspiration and the murmurs of left heart they increase during expiration. So, if you can focus the mitral area in mitral area and in the aortic area, जो दो बाहर वाले एरियाज हैं, उनमें सांस बाहर निकाल के रोकने की कमांड है, और जो दो अंदर वाले एरियाज हैं, एक ट्रैकेस्पिड एरिया और दूसरा पल्मेरी एरिया, ये अंदर वाले एरियाज हैं, इनमें सांस अंदर लेके रोकने की कमांड है। माइट्रल और एयोटिक बाहर वाले एरियाज हैं ट्राइकस्पिड और पल्मेरी अंदर वाले एरियाज हैं बाहर वाले एरियाज में सांस बाहर लेके रोकने की कमांड देनी है अंदर वाले एरियाज में सांस अंदर लेके रोकने की कमांड देनी है वंस यू हैव डन विद द ऑस्कल्टेशन एंड इफ यू हैव टाइम देन डू द रेलेवेंट एग्जामिनेशन लुक फॉर द बेजल क्रैक्स डू द बेजल क्रॉस ऑफ पीछे हूं यहां पे झुक जाए यहां पे झुक जाए do the hepato jugular reflex. Do the hepato jugular reflex. Look for hepatomegaly. Look for pedal edema. And examine the hands of the patient for signs of infective endocarditis like splinter hemorrhages, genuine lesions, ocular nodes, petechiae, bruises, and the rest of the things. Now, when you will be done with your examination, say thank you to the patient, thank you, and cover him again. This has marks in your examination. But later. Now, once you have done with examination, the examiner will ask you about certain questions. First of all, he will ask you, give me your findings. Then you need to have a very good description of what you have done. I have an 8 years old boy lying comfortably on bed with no obvious distress or dysmorphic features. <clears throat> on inspection there are no visible scar marks, deformity, pectus excavatum, carinatum or any other uh, deformity in the chest. On palpation the apex period is in the 5th intercostal space in the mid clavicular line tapping in character there was no Parasternal heave or thrill present. The trachea was in the central, in the center, and there were no epigastric pulsations. Both the first and second heart, first and second heart sounds were audible, with a grade three pan-systolic murmur, maximum heard at the lower left parasternal border, 
radiating to the whole of the precordium with no exaggeration on respiration and change of posture. The pitch of the murmur was high and the character of the murmur was harsh or blowing whatever it be. The child is not in heart failure and there are no signs of infective endocarditis. So this would be the description of the child. Thank you so much.